Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day. My name is Siti Sarah Binti Azmi with a metric ID of 1191791. Today, my team and I will be talking, explaining and also presenting to you one of the different groups that we have chosen for this subject as our research written and also presentation topic. It is a different group that existed in our Muslim community and also existed too in Malaysia called Kodiani or Ahmadiyya. So as the first presenter, I will start first. But before that, let's know and learn a bit about what is DV teaching is all about. So according to Jakim, they define that Divya teaching is any teaching or practice brought by Muslims or non-Muslim with the claim that the teaching and practice are an Islamic teaching whereas the teaching and practice are contradict to Islam which is based on the Quran and Hadith as well as in opposition to the practice of Ali Sunnah Wal Jama'ah. So anything that is contradict from the practice of Ali Sunnah Wal Jama'ah which is against the teaching of what has been stated in the Quran and Sunnah is categorized as deviant teaching. So our group has chosen one of the famous deviant teaching groups called Kodiani. So what are they? What makes them also part of deviant teaching movement? So I will briefly explain about this. Kodiani or also known as Ahmadiyya, sometimes it can be called as Ahmadi and even Ahmadiyat, is one of the deviant groups that started to emerge around the 19th century to the early phase of 20th century. So the name of the founder of this teaching was named Mirza Gulam Ahmad bin Gulam Murtada bin Atta Muhammad. This teaching did not come from the Middle East or in the Arab country, surprisingly, but it was originated from a place called Kodian in India, which is, as we have all known, India is a part of Asia. So the name Kodiani was taken from a place called Kodian, make it uh, Kodiani. Originally, since the original of this teaching came from India, of course, there might be or possibility for it to spread its teaching is also mainly targeted around Asia too. Malaysia also is one of the countries that been affected or influenced with this teaching. Not forgetting our neighbor countries as well in this discussion, Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore and also in the originated country itself too are famous with the teaching of Kodiani. Now, according to some news and research founded by academicians, it is reported that this teaching also has been spread to Africa, the Northwest Europe like the United Kingdom and also in the North America. So can you imagine how many followers they have now? It is more than we could ever imagine. The total followers of Kodiani now are estimated between 10 to 20 million worldwide led by Mirza Masrur Ahmad, which is the caliph that is in charge of making this teaching spread all over the world after the death of Mirza Gulam Ahmad, the founder. So after the death of Mirza Gulam Ahmad, his caliph was the one who made it Kodiani become famous and has been introduced to many countries until now. Before we understand further about Kodiani, I will briefly explain what some of their teachings that they have taught in the mind of their followers. Just like any other divine teachings that had already existed in the world or in our Muslim community, the characteristic to recognize if the teaching is against the real teachings of Islam are pretty much the same. So how do we identify them? These are some of the main characteristics to recognize them. It is said that the teachings of Ahmadiyya from Kodian have spread from South Asia with followers in 185 countries and now its members are as many as 150 million people. It is led by Hadrat Mirza Masrur Ahmad based in London. In the Malay world, Islam has been established not only in Malaysia and Indonesia but also in Singapore. 
it is still unclear when the exact date of Cordianis presence in Malaysia. And now we proceed to the founder of Cordiani in Malaysia. Throughout the history of Cordiani in Malaysia, there are some opinions about the founder of Cordiani who is responsible for this teaching. The first person is Sher Muhammad Khairuddin. There are opinions that say that the heritage of Cordiani teachings in Malaysia begin in 1906 through Sher Muhammad Khairuddin, a police officer from India who was on duty in Selangor. Second is the United Kingdom based Muslim mission. There is also a view that say there is also a view that say that the teaching of Qadiani can only be actively growing through the effort of an organization known known as the United Kingdom based Muslim Mission and led by Kwaja Kamaluddin. The possibility that it was started there was it was associated with, with Muslim of Indian origins known as known as a, Known as the Ajuman I Islam, the organization that has published Islamic Review and the publication at the time was circulated throughout Malaya. And the third person is Maulana Hussein Iyas. There is also a view that Maulana Hussein Iyas, who came to Singapore, opened the cent opened a center at 116 Unan Road and brought the introduction of Islamic teachings to Malaya in the early 1930s. That was the starting point of the spreading of Ahmadiyya teachings and it was from the work of Maulana Hussein Iyas. Okay, what is fatwa related to Qadiani teaching? Through the Department of Islamic Development Malaysia, JAKIM, the Avian teachings are defined as any doctrines and practice initiated and supported by Muslims and non-Muslims who claim that the teachings are based on the teachings and practice of Islam whereas the teachings and practice contradict that of the Al-Quran and the Sunnah. There are also contrary to the Islamic faith and the school of Ali Sunnah wal Jamaah. The issue of heresy can be seen as a virus that will inhibit the agenda of development, unity and true faith of Muslims in Malaysia, if not dealt with immediately. Second, firm action. In December 28, Dr. Hassan Ali, the State Legislative Assembly, Adun of Gombak Setia, Selangor, has signaled that more decisive action would be taken against Qadiani followers. The stern action which include confiscated the land even the building was erected as a center for dissemination of their teaching because the land was designated for residential sites rather than for the synagogue and the Qadiani members are not allowed to be buried in a Muslim cemetery area after this. The Islamic Religious Council of Malaysia also empowered by law to enforce a fatwa by prosecuting any Muslim who violates the relevant provisions as a criminal offence and cooperate with the Royal Malaysia Police PDRM in enforcing the law if there are any elements of crime or offence that is related to the current legislation. Any related fatwa that has been gathered has full authority and must be respected and cannot be disputed by any party. What is Qadani and its teaching? Qadani is a teaching founded by Mirza Gulam Ahmad. But in 1975, the Council of Governors of Malaysia agreed to make the Qadiani as a different teaching and consider a post with the National Islamic Jurisdiction Council. The main features of this teaching are that he was a recipient of divine revelation and of abolition of the holy war, the Messiah, and finally the Prophet Mirza Ghulam Ahmad as Al-Mahdi. He distorted the Quranic verses and their interpretation. For example, he claimed that Ahmad's words in Surah As-Saf verse 6 refers to him as his name was Ahmad. Mirza also claimed to have wonders and received a disclosure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this teaching also claimed that Jesus died as an ordinary people. Next, how do we identify Qadani in Malaysia? First, Malaysian Qadani is the same as Qadani teaching in other countries. Second, they say Mirza Gulam is a messenger and prophet 
Like the name Ahmad as mentioned in Surah As-Saf refers to himself, not the Prophet Muhammad. Third, we can identify Qadiani in Malaysia which adhere only to the logic of reason such as Qadiani perceive um, as mainstream Muslim that they were convinced the Prophet Muhammad was not the last Prophet. But Mirza Gulam Ahmad is the last Prophet through common sense logically. Hmm. This means that Qadiani belief only come about with the logic of reason which can be felt, seen or thought. Alright, how did Qadiani's teaching develop and how did their propaganda spread this sect? Initially, this teaching was only practiced by Mirza's family members. However, it has been steadily growing to the next generation. History has shown that the vanguard of this heresy is often those who are Muslims and bring this teaching later to influence and develop it to gain more followers. As a result, from ancient time to the present, there have been Muslims who have deviated from natural religious belief. In 1930s decade, the sighting of Qadiani, which is a teaching that deviated from the faith via Ali Sunnah wal Jamaah reported, starting in Selangor, namely in Jeram, Sungai Tua, Sungai Bulu and Kampung Nakhoda. The beginning of its development with the establishment of a school adjacent to the headquarters of Qadiani operations and their teaching also mobilized different religious activities in the shape of religious lectures, talk and so forth and open to the public as well as its member at their center. They also practiced Friday prayers separately and that uh, was by collecting Qadiani followers that reside around Klan Valley. The highest number is up to 10,000 followers, 500 of whom in Selangor. Kif was a Qadiani center called Baitul Salam and were donated by Haji Yusuf bin Omar and Muhammad Zain bin Hussein. It is a building used by Qadiani followers as a center of worship. It was refurbished into a three-story store building which was focus of the Qadiani movement and is better known as the Qadiani Church in Malaysia. Additionally, to ensure the smooth deployment of Qadiani teachings, a few buildings have been set up to create a worship center while allowing them to assemble. Second, Qadiani distributed through specific people. For example, the Qadiani movement in Sabah became smoother by the first Sadakan Qadiani member, which is Haji Muhammad Dantal Mura Yusuf. In 1956, the Qadiani movement gained influence. He is responsible for investigating the teaching by the Sabah Islamic Religious Department. The movement then registered its organization called the Muslim Association Tahri Zadiya. Third, Qadiani movement runs a movement organized in two parts, which is Council of Amila and Council of Shura. The Council of Amila comprised by 20 members chaired by the chairperson of Amir. Second, the Shura board is a member of council with branch presidents across Malaysia on its members. This movement is not confined to men only, but it is also focusing on women with Lajna Imaila, where the missionaries were responsible for spreading the teachings and ensuring the smooth process of proselytizing among the followers. In addition, the growth of this teaching in Malaysia is also due to work of Qadiani missionaries to spread this teaching. This can obviously be seen in Sabah where missionaries from Qadiani found the teaching to be distributed among indigenous people and tribes. As a conclusion, the result of the discussion can be concluded that heresy is a misconduct against the purity of Islam and this issue of heresy needs to be studied by Muslims and need to be given attention at all levels of society regardless of age or background. 
It is because, according to the findings of the analysis, there are still several individuals who are not aware of the existence of Cordianist deviant teaching and as many as 31.4% from 51 respondents did not know the Cordiani have long existed in Malaysia. This raises concern if Cordiani teachings continue to spread if not prevented from the outset. Throughout this research, we have found that Cordiani teachings is deviating from the truth of Islam and their goal is to build a new Islam. Their focus is also on urban or village areas, even in rural areas, especially those who have little adherence or no foundation about the truth of Islam can easily be trapped and convinced by them. Alright, some suggestions that can be present and add in short term and long term in addressing the spread of Kordiani teaching. First, cooperation from all parties, including the public, religious authorities, federal agencies and others, to put the agenda of eradication of heresy as a priority. Second, further improving the quality and quantity of monitoring, investigating cases of heresy, including using police equipment, such as voice recorders, closed circuit surveillance, surveillance cameras, and so on, as evidence. Next, raising awareness among the community about the dangers of heresy through thought programs in public place and the disciplines of heresy should be a core course that must be taken by students of various majors at the university, especially in Islamic studies. And lastly, tightening laws and regulation prohibiting religious teaching activities from being conducted in private. All religious activities are required to be held in public because most heretical activities move secretly.